Hey guys, brand old build show. We're talking today about towns, houses, how they all fit together. The idea of how your towns grow and why they're growing, right? Understanding the history of your town makes you a better builder today in the build show. So giving this talk to a local real estate company, helping their realtors understand house styles better. They're in and out of houses all the time, right? They're in and out of houses of different areas and different periods, different neighborhoods, and the house styles change. Why, right? Realize that technology drives the engine of your town, okay? You know, if you think of the very earliest towns, Philadelphia, Boston, Charleston, right? The earliest port cities were where commerce happened, right? Houses grew up in those areas because of business, right? And so those towns grew around that. It changes with, you know, uh, rivers, right? The Erie Canal, right? And then the railroad. The railroad was a huge thing, especially here in Fort Worth. 1876, there's not many people in Tarrant County, but by the time the railroad arrives in 1876, by the 1880s, 1890s, a huge boom, right? Fort Worth's a big cattle town. Instead of driving the cattle up the Chisholm Trail, they stop in Fort Worth, big railhead here, and they're taking the cattle by rail now up to other parts of the country. By the 1880s and late 1880s, Fort Worth is a huge railroad town and the population swells. Now, because of the 1880s, right, because of that period, we're in a Victorian period of time, right? And so our architecture reflects that Victorian style, right? The first growth ring, okay, in Fort Worth is the railroad and Victorian architecture, okay? Now, realize that towns grow in these rings, right? And whenever I'm driving, you know, in cross-country trips and I go to a town, I can tell whether I'm close to the center of a town based on how old the houses are, right? And so on the outside, it's the big urban sprawl, the, the, the ranches and things. But as you get closer, it becomes the bungalows, then the Victorian, and then maybe earlier, depending where you are. So there's these growth rings around your town. In Fort Worth, we grew second with oil, okay? And oil and cattle from 1910 up into the 1920s and 30s was a another huge growth ring and our housing stock, okay, if I think about the historic housing stock in Fort Worth, Texas, it's a few Victorians and a lot of arts and crafts and bungalows. There's an area in Fort Worth called Quality Hill. It's near Summit Avenue. It's near that early concentric circle of Fort Worth. Downtown's really close by, but it's a Queen Anne Victorian that we toured on another Build Show video. It's really close to downtown and it shows kind of the kind of houses that used to line that street. There's only two there now, but it used to line that street. It was the Victorian neighborhood, all part of the early architecture of Fort Worth. When we work on that house, we learn about old building methods and old ways of doing stuff, which are fascinating. And the amount of wood in that house is enviable, right? Especially for a wood guy like me, it's just incredible in there. Looking at the past teaches us a great deal. Fairmount neighborhood is one of the largest bungalow neighborhoods in the country, right? It's a working man's neighborhood. Fort Worth exploded during that time period and it's reflected in our architecture. And then the third growth ring that happens is the defense industry. Lockheed Martin is here, right? We're building jets, we're doing things. That all starts right after World War II, during the Cold War. There's a lot of defense industry here, Air Force bases, things like that. And so, Fort Worth, again, grows in this concentric circle. Now, why is that important, right? One, it's important that you understand and be able to read architecture, right? A good friend of mine, Bradley Hartman, was telling me that uh, he was working for a guy very early in his career, and the guy said, yeah, come over to my house. Uh, you can't miss it. I'm the Victorian down the street. He, he told the story of having to go to the, the library and look up Victorian so because he didn't know what a Victorian-style house was, right? As you grow as a builder, right, you also should be working on some of these houses. And there is a character and style to those houses, bungalows, colonial revivals, period revivals, that you should try to reflect as you build. The same thing is true as you, if you're building new houses and you're building a new colonial or a new Tudor style house. 
There are things that you want to copy and traditions that you should be a student of the past because they'll help you build better. So being a student of these architectural styles, right? Being a student of how your town grows, okay? Understanding the history of your town, guys, come on. You know, Fort Worth originally here because of the railroad and then cattle, then oil. I know that, right? And, I, and it helps me understand my town better, right? And so you should understand, you know, why your town grew, what its main industry is. You know, there's a big cattle baron house here called Thistle Hill that we did a video of here on the Build Show. It's, an, it's a fantastic house, but it's part of the history of this town and it makes me better, right? And it helps me talk to clients about what they want to build because, oh, you know what house we love? We love that house in this neighborhood. Oh, you like bungalows, okay? Or, oh, you like period revival houses. Those kind of things, understanding these things, and being a student of design, the student of historic design actually makes you a better builder, helps you talk to your clients, and is something you really need to do and study in your town. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Home Millwork, Whole Homes, a lot of the behind the scenes things, a lot of houses that we're touring, always digging into great historic features from the past. I'm Brent Hull, thanks for watching.